Aloha, and welcome to the inaugural Hawaii Contemporary Art Summit. We're so excited to present this multi-day celebration of contemporary art and ideas. This program is thematically linked to our forthcoming Hawaii Triennial in 2022, a multi-site exhibition of contemporary art from Hawaii, Asia Pacific, and beyond. I'd love to hear from you, Ai Weiwei, as a visual artist, what is the most um, compelling issues and what have you been doing during this moment in time? For me, it's not much change because I've been under restrictions and surveillance uh, for my lifetime. And uh, all those obstacles uh, only uh, stimulating or encourage me to, to do something uh, to respond and to, to act. As artists, actually, the most vulnerable and the most valuable uh, situation is we don't know who we are. If you know who you are, you're not a real artist. You have to put yourself in danger. And uh, for me, I have to create those obstacles for me to understand who I am and, uh, you know, what I'm doing. So you don't regret mm -hmm. to say, I did something which uh, I shouldn't do it, you know. <laughs> because I sp basically I didn't do anything, so I have nothing to regret. But I've come to see that artists are going to have to lead us out of this mess. Uh, we have at our university really the best scientists that have all the data proving that we are not just heading for it, but in the midst of climate catastrophe. The reefs are already dying. Mm. The ocean is rising. Uh, the killer storms, the fires, they have the scientific evidence. And they're so frustrated because nobody listens. Mm. So then we go to your department, political science, <laughs> where we have really, there is nobody more brilliant than the people in our department in terms of understanding structures of power and mm -hmm. how they operate. And they are not able to lead us out of this mess. We need them, we need all of this. We need the science, we need the political theory, but we have to grab people in their heart mm. and get them to stand up to make this better world that we, we absolutely so desperately need. So often when we hear you speak about your work and when others write about your work, it's very much in terms of a social practice. Um, it's about the community that you're based in. Can you describe, especially for those who haven't had the good fortune of visiting Chicago and what you've been doing there. Can you kind of talk about your art practice and how you've kind of really focused in on architecture and social practice and community building as well? Well, it, it feels really important to say, Melissa, that uh, a, lot of my, a lot of my practice has to do with the way that I was trained and the way that I was raised. Dorchester Projects is, is one of those things where we could say, okay, these buildings, we could talk about them as sculpture. That felt important. Or my involvement with uh, the city was a kind of durational performance. I was, I was performing as a developer. I was, I was taking the tools of real estate and then turning that into a sculptural device, we could say. But then there were other moments like um, uh, the Yamaguchi Institute, where I would take my interest in ceramics and my interest in race reconciliation and my, my interest in black aesthetics and bring those things together in a kind of um, uh, a, a contrived uh, fiction around the relationship between uh, black makers and Japanese makers under the Yamaguchi Institute. Those moments where I was trying to, to bridge what seemed like unbridgeable things that those moments kind of gave me a lot of pleasure, you know? So it's like, well, how do we bring great placemaking to black neighborhoods 
that are, that are void of the resources that are in white neighborhoods? And how do you make great institutions look, look and perform as good as they would in your downtown, but you do it in the hood? And I felt like I had been given uh, understanding of that. And I wanted to just kind of practice doing those things. We're really excited to be considering some sites that have um, a lot of cultural memory around World War II. And we're also considering a number of Japanese artists to do new commissions and other sorts of works. And I wonder how you're thinking about this very complex history as it's overlaid with um, these very different sites across Honolulu. Thank you, Melissa. This has been an amazing opportunity for me to think deeply about Hawaii. I had this naive image of the island as a, as a paradise, which is somehow disconnected from all the troubles in the world. But this time, I have a different, uh, very different mindset, working with you and Drew on this triennial with the title, uh, The Pacific Century. To me, this title implies the vastness of time and uh, space. So it's encouraging me to keep a historical consciousness. Um, I'm a Japanese and I have been uh, specializing in post-World War II Japanese art history, so I cannot but help take, uh, taking interest in the memory of World War II. So I think the artistic interventions at those decommissioned military sites would help us um, move beyond this uh, paradisiac image of the island and dig deeper into the history. There's also been, particularly in the United States, as I say, and emanating from that globally, an awareness of state um, um, violence and the need for criminal justice, the need for social justice in legal terms, in national terms. And the fact that um, as many Americans who spoke about the pandemic, the same number, around 40%, were intensely speaking about George Floyd, gives some, at least in the American context, makes you think about why I want to, in, to think about social justice in these terms, in putting these things together. And the fact that artists, muralists across the world painted on walls the image of George Floyd was not simply in the memory of a man who died in Minneapolis in terrible circumstances. They used George Floyd across the world to talk about inequities and injustices in their society. Eating in Public was founded in 2003 in Hawaii by Gay Chan and Andita Sharma to nudge a little space outside of the state and capitalist systems. Following the path of pirates and nomads, hunters and gatherers, diggers and levelers, we gather at people's homes, plant food gardens on private and public land, set up free stores and other autonomous systems of exchange, generally without permission. Unlike Santa and the state, we give equally to the naughty and the nice. We don't exploit anyone's labor nor offer any tax deductions. We are, in all of the world's various definitions, free. You know, I really like the everyday, the ordinary, the banal. I really have um, a distaste about spectacular things. I don't do holidays. Um, yeah, so I think that aligns with the, the way that I see the world. But there's this violence about the invasive species rhetoric that um, is very nationalistic. Mm -hmm. It's about like territorial purity and it's often genocidal, like they just want to kill everything. So. Um, and there's this confusion that, that everything that's not native becomes to be understood as invasive. Mm. And I think that's not only incorrect, 
but it's dangerous in these political times when all over the world there's increasing um, um, antagonisms against people that are seen to, you know, not belong. Mm. You know, isn't it not what we are, but what, how we engage in the world that matters. Um, so I, you know, so action or participation versus identity. Mm. Come join us in a, a little, little creative, creative play. We will create something like this. So does it look like a fish or a vehicle? Millie, today I'm going to show you very simple and fun little zin making. So this is Invasive Species Month and we wanted to kind of showcase a little bit of how, you know, how we can eat it because what is a better way to uh, help get rid of something? Make, Make it, it yummy. yummy. Make it taste yummy. Innovations, he chose to ride with groupers and get down with all the fishes. Assume he likes the scenery, a compliment his wishes of being in the presence of the ocean is the outcome. Huh. Why we learn to live without sun? Yeah. Forced to overcome conditioning. Now sit and whisper to the serpent your position in. All sides lead to a source before the big bang split and we came ashore. Dust set adrift to the wild, wild breath. Spoken in frequencies by your death. Over souls pointing to the open door. More mature, go explore why you got that life still left. Mahalo for taking time to share this space with us. I know we are all here because we believe in the power art has to inspire, reflect, and connect us. For those of you who are new to our work, this is a transformative moment for Hawaii Contemporary, building upon the success of our past from partners like many of you tuning in today and moving sustainably into a dynamic and collaborative future.